Now, in probability, we use these words to describe things. For example, independent. When you talk about something that's independent, maybe when you grow up, you become more independent of your parents, right? You can do things by yourselves, right? So A and B, we're saying that they are kind of separate in a sense. What do I mean by that? Well, I mean that the probabilities are not affected by each other. Sorry, not the probabilities, the events. So the events are not affected by each other. The events are not affected by each other. So, example, with um, what Freya was talking about, about the coin, right? Each time you flip a coin, right, the coin itself doesn't have memory. It doesn't remember that what the results have been flipped in the past. So we say that each time I flip a coin, those events are going to be independent. Same thing with rolling a die, okay? This die does not have memory. It doesn't know what's going to happen or what has happened. And each time I roll it, it's going to be a fresh roll. Okay, so these events, we call them independent. Let's look at a quick example. Um, can I get you, Ben, to read out on independent events? So this sheet here, um, question five. Can you read it out for me? Okay, so let's have a look at this, right? The, f the, the key thing that I'm looking here, this is actually a term that I see. It says it is replaced. Okay, so imagine you have um, like a, I don't know, a bag there with counters, right? And it says it is replaced. What that means is, if it's replaced, it means you're taking these counters out and you're putting them back in. So usually when you take something out, the probability is affected. But the fact that I'm taking it out and then I'm putting it back in, it means that the probabilities won't change at all, right? Does that make sense? So if I, imagine if I took this red counter out, all right, usually there'd be one less, but I'm putting it back in, so that's not going to be affected. So let's just have a think about these first couple of questions. What's the probability that the first counter is red? Yeah, right. It's very simple, right? All you have to do is we, use, we go back to that definition of the favorable outcome, so which ones are red and how many total things there are. Well, if there's five red and there's ten total ones, then that would just be five out of ten. Or as Rhiannon said, you can simplify that to half. Okay, cool. All right, that's the first one. Second one. What about the probability that the second one is red? It's still half, right? Because the key word to see here is that it's replaced. So I, I can take one out, but then I'm putting it back in. It's replaced. It's still going to be 5 out of 10. Uh, Rips, what's the next one saying? Both counters. Okay. This is where we want to be careful because if I come back to if I come back to this coin example, right? I know I know that the probability of getting one head or a tail is going to be 50/50 or half. But if I want both of them to be heads, I can see that it's a quarter. Now you could go back to this idea of you know drawing out sample spaces and trying to write it out each time. But we have a better way of doing that now. I can just say if two events are independent, so they're not affected by each other. To find the probability of A and B happening, I can just multiply them, right? So if I go back to this one, these events, they are independent because if I take a counter out and then I just put it back in again, each time I draw, it's not affected by each other, right? Okay. Does that make sense? It's not affected by each other? So to find the probability of both of them happening, all I have to do is just say, well, what's the probability of the first one being red? That's 5 out of 10. What's the probability of the second one being red? Also 5 out of 10. And then I'll just multiply them together. That's it, right? So if two events are independent, so the, f the first and second draws, those are independent. To find the probability of both of them happening, I just multiply those probabilities. You get 25 out of 100. Okay? Any questions about that? Corey, what's the next one? Both counters are blue. I can use the same idea here, right? I'm, I'm trying to think. Okay, what's the probability of the first one being blue here? Well, there's three of them. Three over ten. That's it, right? Because those events are independent, I'm doing two draws. I pick one out, that's three out of ten. I'll put it back in, and I'll take it out again. Well, there's still a three out of ten chance. All right, um, we've got a couple more to go. Okay, both counters are green. Can you help me out with this one tomorrow? So. I want to know the probability of both of the counters being green. I want to go back to this idea of, okay, I know that they're independent, 
So what's the probability of just the first one being green when I'm, when I'm taking it out? Um, 2 over 10, right? Yeah, because there's two green counters, there's 10 total ones, right? So again, it's just 2 out of 10. And because these events are independent, I can just multiply them together. 4 out of 100. Yeah, it's not a very likely chance, is it? So both of being green, 4 out of 100. Um, what's the next one? Okay, this one's interesting. Probability of one red and one blue. One red and one blue. How can I put these guys together? Well, you have five red. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. Because these, these events are independent, that's what I'm coming back to. I know that they're independent. I'm just going to keep thinking, okay, what are the probabilities of the individual ones? And then just multiplying them together, right? So I've got 5 out of 10. That's the probability of drawing out of red. The probability of drawing out of blue was 3 out of 10. I'm just multiplying them together. And I think that's 15 out of 100. Awesome. Almost there. Um, Maylin, next one. G. Yeah. I said 8 over 10 times 8. Yeah, how'd you get that? I looked at, I minus the green. Yeah, that's it. So the probability of neither of them being green, don't overcomplicate, you're just saying, well, if I take the greens out, there's 8 of them left, so I can choose from any of those 8. Right? I, if I choose a red or blue, that's not, that's not green. Right? So the probability of neither being green, that's just 8 over 10, and I'll do the same thing because they're independent, times 8 over 10. That's actually pretty high. 64 out of 100. Last one, Eva. What's the probability of, of, of at least one being green? How did you get that? All right, we'll come back to that. Vic, yeah. Yeah, but what, tell, me, tell me what you're thinking. I mean, 36. Yeah, right. Okay, so well, I think what Vic was thinking, right, is remember, come back to anytime you're stuck with probability, always come back to a simpler example. I said that the P of the probability of at least one thing happening is one minus the probability of it not happening. And I think it's really clear to see it here when I'm looking at these heads and tails examples, right? So anytime you see this word at least one, you want to think one minus the probability of it not happening. It's a much easier way to calculate it, right? Because if you want to think at least one green, you could try and write out all the different options, like, I don't know, red, green, 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 blue, green. But then you have to consider the fact that there's so many different ways you could get them, right? It's, it's too hard to do. So we just come back to this idea. Anytime you see at least one, we can just say, well, that's the same as one minus the probability of neither being green, which I already have here, don't I? The probability of it not being green was 64 out of 100. So 1 minus 64 over 100, that's just 36 out of 100. Any questions about that? No. no? Pretty, not too bad, right?